Hi everyone, Todd Keppel with Klamath Canyon Museum here. This is our fifth in a series of videos to go with our photo of the week feature. This is a, uh, a series that's kind of experimental for us. I mean, we're just trying out this YouTube uh, channel to see how it works. Um, we think it might be a pretty good way for us to share resources that we have in the museum. Now, uh, the museum is county owned. It's owned by county government. And those of us who work here are county employees and we're being paid with uh, revenue that comes from a property tax and a motel tax and from donations and so we want to make sure that we're using those resources wisely and doing uh, services and programs that are useful uh, to the taxpayers so we need to hear from you on whether you think this is a good way for us to uh, share the history of Klamath County uh, and one thing that we think is really good about this is we can look at some materials that are in our museum things that maybe you'd never get a chance to see even if you visit the museum because we just have shelves and boxes and, and entire rooms filled with um, archives and photographs and artifacts that rarely see the light of day. And this is one way we can get some of those materials out and share them with the public. So we'll give you an example with our photo of the week. Let's sit inside and uh, look at some materials right now. So come on in. Hey! Inside the museum we have a number of rooms that we use for storage of artifacts and archives. This is one of my favorite rooms. It's the newspaper room. In here we have about a century's worth of bound volumes of newspapers starting with the Klamath Republican in the late 1800s and the Evening Herald and then the Klamath News and then of course the Klamath Falls Herald and News. So this is the room that we come to often when we're researching topics. We have a volunteer researcher, a woman by the name of uh, Marl Jandro, who does the research for the Looking Back column in the Herald of News. So if you'll come out this way, I'll show you an article that Marl found here uh, about a month ago. It's in the April 15th Herald of News. Uh, 1969, announcing that uh, a businessman by the name of Gene Fable was going to build a museum here in uh, Klamath Falls. The story jumps from the front page to page 9, where we see a photo of Mr. Fable on the left with uh, Mr. Hyken, the owner of the Link River Cottages. Uh, this is announcing that um, Mr. Fable was buying out the cottages for a site for his museum. Al Schmeck is the man in the center who apparently was the real estate agent uh, handling the transaction. So when we saw this photo, uh, we knew that we had a better photo of the Link River Cottages or the Link River Auto Camp as it was known in earlier times. And that's going to be our photo of the week. But before we show you that photo, I wanted to show you a few other photos that show what was um, found at that site in earlier times. So we've got a photo that was taken, I think, probably around uh, 1880 to 1885. And this photo uh, shows the little town of Linkville with Hogback Mountain in the distance, Link River running across the center of the photo, and we see a portion of Lake Iwana here, and the Main Street Bridge across the Link River. And so it was right about in this spot on the west bank of the river where the Link River cottages would someday be built, um, but not for a while yet. Here is a later photo from about 1910. Some of the features that help us date this photo is we can see just the top of the Baldwin Hotel building that was built in 1905. And in the distant background we can see the A Canal, which was built in 1906. And it looks like we've got a railroad running across the photo. The Southern Pacific arrived here in 1909. So Looks like this photo was probably taken in 1910 or shortly thereafter. But what we want to look at is this two-story building here at the west end of the Link River Bridge. Uh, so this building apparently built in the late 1800s or very early 1900s. Uh, we know this was a rooming house. It's identified as such on one of the old Sanborn fire maps from the early 1900s. Uh, but this two-story building didn't stand all that long. Uh, in sometime around 1930, the Link River uh, Auto Camp was built, originally known as the Wainema Auto Camp, uh, very briefly. But in the early 1930s, it became known as the Link River Auto Camp. And here we see the Auto Camp uh, right beside the uh, bridge on Main Street in a photo probably taken around 1960 when the West Side Bypass 
uh, was built through Klamath Falls. So this is the location for our photo of the week. And uh, I guess this is a good time to just show you the photo. This is our photo of the week for the week of Sunday, April 14th, 2019. Our photo shows the main building for the Link River Auto Camp, the office and uh, camp store, as well as an upstairs uh, space that was probably um, the living quarters for the longtime owners, Ernest and Florence Hyken. And then of course we see several of the cabins. There were about 25 cabins, mostly two room cabins in the Link River Auto Camp. And this would have been a fairly typical arrangement for um, uh, auto camps of the day. There were several in Klamath Falls and many of them across the country as people in America were obtaining their own uh, personal automobiles and taking to the roads for uh, their vacations and various trips. As we zoom in on this photo, we see a highway sign that helps us date this photo. We can see a, a little sign for Highway 97. Now we know that originally uh, the Dallas California Highway or Highway 97 as it came to be known came into town from the north on uh, Lakeport Avenue down Bean Street, uh, Oregon Avenue, 9th Street uh, down to Maine and came through uh, part of uh, the downtown area before turning to the southeast on 6th Street and then heading on south uh, down Washburn Way out towards Midland on the east side of the Klamath River. It was in 1936 that the state built a new bridge across the Klamath River just south of town near where Columbia Plywood is now. And so that brought Highway 97 traffic all the way down Main Street and across Link River and directly past the Link River Auto Camp. So those were probably good days for the, the uh, Link River Auto Camp. We can also see that the main building had a number of advertisements on it. There were advertisements for orange kissed soda pop and old gold cigarettes. And we can see that you could get a chicken dinner here at the, the auto camp. Sounds good to me. Uh, in the window we can see that there were um, advertisements for fresh fruits and vegetables. We can see that you could make a phone call from the camp office and uh, pick up some ice cream. We can also get a good look at the filling station that they had on the grounds, the Richfield service station with the old time gas pumps there. We notice that there is a sign advising motorists to slow down as there was bridge work being conducted on the uh, Main Street Bridge across the Link River, no doubt. And there's a box there where you could mail your postcards and letters, probably to relatives back home. Another item that helps us date this photo is noting that it was taken by the May King Studio. May King was a female photographer who worked in Klamath Falls uh, from the time she moved here in 1926 until uh, she sold her studio in 1941. So between the highway sign and the May King Studio notation, we know this photo was taken sometime between 1936 and 1941. Here's one last photo we wanted to share with you uh, showing the Link River um, uh, auto camp or cottages. Uh, this photo probably taken in the 1940s and it gives you just another view of what it might have been like to pull into Klamath Falls and into the Link River cottages and rent a cottage for the night. Pretty close quarters but uh, not all that dissimilar from uh, a modern motel. Well, okay, folks, uh, there's our photo of the week. We would like to take you out to the spot where this photo was taken, so if you got just a couple of minutes, uh, why don't you come with us and we'll take a quick ride. It looks like right about here is where May King stood when she took the photo of the Lost River Auto Camp. So Jean Favel purchased this site in April of 1969. By April of 1972, he had opened his museum here. Uh, Mr. Favel passed in 2001. But the museum has passed now to a nonprofit corporation that continues to operate the Favel Museum. Uh, let's run inside real quick and have a look. Pat McMillan is the uh, previous director of the Klamath County Museum, where I now work. Now she's the curator here at the Favel Museum. And you knew Gene Favel, right? Yes, I yeah. did. Mm -hmm. Quite a gentleman, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He was our neighbor. Oh, is that right? Uh, yes. And so you were telling me about the artifacts that are built into the wall here. Where did these mm -hmm. come from? Well, they came from this site, uh, from the auto court which Jean bought, uh, and they were digging the foundation, and they kept turning up grinding stones, and oh. they were just awed by them, and Jean had them 
incorporated into the wall so they'd always be here. They, the Native Americans were fishing right out here to, along the Link River and when they moved to the next food gathering place, the women would bury their grinding stones. Oh, is that how it worked? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, then of course the reason the museum here is Gene was quite a collector. Yes, he was. What are the biggest parts of his collection? That the are biggest still here? parts, of, of course, are arrowheads in the in the collection. But he had friends from all over the Northwest, and he traded and bought, and you know, getting the things put together that he wanted in his museum. A lot of art here, right? A lot of art. Uh, they added art because they thought that not everybody in the world would like to have Indian artifacts to look at all afternoon. So they added contemporary Western art for the people who were interested in another area of the West. And do you still have the miniature firearms? Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> awesome. Well, Pat, thanks for your help today. Oh, appreciate that welcome. very much. <laughs> Well, as you can see, Jean Fable amassed a tremendous collection here. And so we encourage you to do the museum tour in Klamath Falls. Visit the County Museum, the Baldwin Hotel Museum, uh, sometime when it's open in the summer, and uh, stop by the Fable Museum. It's a great place to visit. You know, we would be remiss if we didn't mention that there is a historic marker on this property. It's the spot where um, the Daughters of the American Colonist placed a marker for Mark Frain. He was an early day trapper and came here in the 1850s actually. His trading post was actually on the opposite side of the river, but the marker is on this side of the river. I'm not sure why that is. So folks, as we said at the beginning, we'd like to hear back from you if you enjoy these videos. Uh, if you do, you can really help us out by subscribing to our channel and giving us a like. That really helps us with the uh, YouTube algorithm, so we'd appreciate that. For the Klamath County Museum, I'm Todd Keppel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.